welcome back to Reclaiming Our Identity. In this video, we are actually going to take you way back to the beginning of when we first met. So, get comfortable. It's not a really long story, but you might find it interesting. We're the West. We're the West. Can you Jenny Pike, Kelsey West. Cohen? from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So I, um, are, we, are we giving personal background before we met or just at the point where we met? Um, what do you think? I mean, whatever you want to do. <laughs> well, I guess I was just going to say, I, I, I am the middle daughter of three girls. I have two older brothers and then the girls come along. So, um, grew up in Atlanta, like I said, and I knew in middle school, mm, no, it was high school that when I knew that I wanted to be a physical therapist. So, um, we had a career day at high school and I decided I wanted to be a physical therapist. And so that kind of set my trajectory to where I would go to school and what I was going to do with my career path. Um, even though regardless of what I was going to be, I always knew I wanted to go to Oakwood College. So that's where I went and I majored in pre-physical therapy and graduated from there and went to Howard University um, to complete my education, get my bachelor's degree in, um, my bachelor's of science in a program that combined my master's in physical therapy and my bachelor's degree. And so after completing my master's, um, to, well, actually toward the end, I meant to say, of completing my master's degree in my very last year is when I met this guy in my clinical rounds. So um, in physical therapy school, you have to um, spend some time getting clinical education to correlate with your academic learning and so um, as I was working on my master's degree um, my clinical education was comprised of a couple of different experiences but I wanted to save my pediatric um, experience for last because my plan at the time was to specialize in pediatrics and the last clinical rotation was generally the longest one you spent more time there so I wanted to get more experience in that particular um, clinical setting and um, I applied or I requested to go to the National Children's Center which was a phenomenal um, educational facility for children with special needs um, so they provided rehabilitation services as well as education and that's where Keenan West worked as a teacher how long had you worked there when I met you babe? five years I believe it was yes because I started there in 95 and you got there in 2001. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 90, you started the year I graduated from high school and went to, went to college. So yeah, so that's how we met. And so um, that, I guess the, our first interaction was, well, our very first interaction, he doesn't remember because I took um, an advanced pediatrics class in PT school and um, my peds teacher had a relationship with the National Children's Center because of course that's where they sent, Howard sent their students for one of the clinical residencies. So um, we went when I was in just advanced pediatrics class before I even did my last clinical um, rotation. And I noticed him because he was the only male, you're the only guy that taught at the school? Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you miss everybody else is female? How do you not see? And he was so handsome. So, you know, <laughs> he kind of caught my attention. I was like, oh, okay, you cute. But that was it. You know, go back to school, finish, get head in the books, get, stay focused and all of that good stuff. Um, but then when I started in January, my clinical rotation, um, 
it just so happened that my clinical instructor, who was a physical therapist at the, the school at the National Children's Center, assigned me to two classrooms where I would have students and I would treat, um, do the, the physical therapy sessions for a couple of students in each of the classes and one of the classes was his. So um, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember exactly, but I, I'm pretty sure I introduced myself, told him why I was there, the students on my list that I would need to see on a regular basis, and I believe it was twice a week, and I'd come and get them for their physical therapy sessions. It was so much fun. I remember I had a cute pair of jeans. I wore a hole in those jeans because I used to crawl on the floor with them and play games and do all kinds of things with them. Um, anyway, so that's that's how we really got to the point where we were interactive because he was the teacher in the class where I had some of my my students and I remember him telling me one day well, you always just come in and you get and he named the names of the children that I would come to get and then you just drop them off and you don't ever talk and you don't say hey how you doing and how are you Mr. Keenan and I was like okay yeah that's true how are you Mr. Keenan oh that's nice okay I'll see you on Thursday because I gotta come back and get some stuff so no and then the next time the next time I went um, I think I would probably engage you in a little bit more conversation because I think I remember sitting on um, the desk the classroom was empty I remember sitting on a desk and we we talked and kind of you told me a little a, a little bit about yourself and and asked me did I want to do lunch one day so what do you remember about when we first met we we know my memory is much better than yours right so I don't remember any of those things that she mentioned uh, I think I remember probably my recollection of the entire event or all of it was when we I guess went out for our first date which was about a month or so after that first conversation yeah probably about a month or so because mm -hmm. well, it snowed this was in January when I started and remember it snowed and um, I I I could have called my clinical instructor that the, the my the person who was grading me based on you know my performance there was called my clinical instructor and of course I had her number and everything but he had given me his number that time we conversed and I was like I'm gonna call Keenan and ask him what do you all do when it snows? Because like, this is D.C. I'm from Atlanta, so it's different. They go in no matter what because they're prepared for the snow. So I said, I'm going to call him and see. Do you all close down? Do you go in later? You know, I need to know if I need to try to make it in or, or what. And I called them and we talked the whole day. You remember that, babe? No. It was really sad. You no. Know. I don't remember anything. You don't remember that? Oh, I remember that. It was snowing outside. I was on my bed, talking on the phone. Nope. Yeah. Did, did you come over and try to visit me that? No, you didn't come. But that's the day we made plans to go to go out. Because I had he had asked me before if I wanted to go to lunch. And I said, okay, yeah, that's fine, cool. But I never followed up on it. Um, so when we had that conversation, when I called him because I needed help with what to do in the snow... Is when he said, you know what, I asked you about lunch and we haven't done anything yet. We haven't gone anywhere. You didn't say where you wanted, wanted to go. So I said, I had heard about a really nice restaurant in D.C. called B. Smith's, a prominent African-American owned um, restaurant um, with really good food, food in Union Station, which is a, a spot, a hot spot in D.C. So it's a nice place to go. Well, would you say that? You're from there. Is it a nice place to go? Yeah. It's like, it's a yeah. landmark. Yeah. Um, so I said, I'm going to see what he's about because I, I knew, knew it wasn't cheap, cheap, cheap eats. I said, we're going to see what, he, what he's working with. Let's see what he's doing. I want to go to B. Smith's. How about that? He said, fine. Okay, that's all right. When do you want to go? Yep. So that's, that's when we planned our first date. Yeah. So we had our first date at B. Smith's. Uh, that was in March of 2001. Uh, and we enjoyed each other's company and I guess what happened is um, after that we continued to, to continue the date and in a few months later in May is when 
uh, she graduated from Howard uh, with her master's in physical therapy and was moving back home. And of course I was still, you know, in DC. And after she moved, you know, we would visit, you know, each other a couple times a month. I either he, I would he was fly dying without me. Dying. Either I would fly to Atlanta right, or babe. she would you? fly Don't act you can be you can be keep it real for the people. Honey, come on. You were pining. I mean, I didn't want you to um you know, after you had met me, let your emotions you were, out. Let them out. Let them out. Right after you met me, and you know, and you were just, 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 just couldn't contain Where yourself you because you know I was just, you know, you I was just, you just, just, just I was just so attractive to you. I mean, you so, were you were extremely attractive, and you still are. However, I was eager as all get out to get back home to Atlanta and reconnect with my friends and my family. Oh yeah. Yeah, I and I didn't, and that. I didn't want you to be torn, you know. Between what and what? Between me and your family, so I said, let me just go ahead and fly down there, you know, so we can see each other. No, you were like, I, I said, I'm here, I made it. I'm looking for a ticket. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. I had just gotten home the the next day. I'm looking for. I'm really, and he had never in his life flown in an airplane before. Look at me, I'm just, this is where I just started to change your life. Change it, I'm telling you. So, the first time you had even ever been to an airport was when you picked me up from the airport one time after after Christmas break or one of the, a break or something. Cause I remember you got me a card and it had, let's see, so January, first kiss was in March, April. Did I go for alumni weekend or something? Anyway, he picked me up from the airport um, was it the Dallas or BWI? That's neither here nor there. Picked me up from the airport and had a card sitting in the front seat. Do you remember that? No. Oh my goodness, honey, this is critical to our story. You don't remember the first card you I mean, got it's me? Critical. And it, okay. I mean, you oh, is, tell the story, so oh it's so critical. I don't remember. The card, it. you asked me, could you kiss me? I Do you remember, remember that? that. I mean, I, I, in the card, I had you had said you missed me. You had given you a million down. cards and but flowers But that was the first stuff. one. I don't remember that. I mean, I, 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 you know. Anyway. But anyway, so we would go. We would fly to, you know, I would fly to Atlanta, or she would fly to DC every couple of, I mean, a couple of times a month. No. Uh, well, a couple was, times a month. Was a couple I, times a I month. I didn't have it like that. I wasn't working yet. Yeah. You might have flown that off because you yeah. were working. Yeah, so because I remember, I remember, I remember us seeing each other at least once or twice a month. I, at least maybe, once or twice. maybe, okay, all right. Yeah, I remember, I remember at least once or twice a month. I know we tried, but I couldn't afford it, and my parents don't want to go buy no tickets like that, so you must be coming to see me. And so, um, and the first, so, and, do you know the first? Do you remember the first time you came? It was for Daisha's wedding. My oldest, my sister, my oldest sister's wedding was your first visit to Atlanta. Oh, was that the first visit? Mm -hmm. So you, <laughs> what, I mean, and that's a time to, to visit. Your, you know, your first introduction mm -hmm. to my family with so much going on, you get to meet the whole entire family, the, the you know, her, her soon to be in laws and everything. You don't remember what that weekend was like or anything? Mm -hmm. Are you sure that I was just, the first time? Yeah, that was the very first time that you mm -hmm. came. Mm -hmm. They got married in September. So I graduated in May. June, July, August, and their wedding was September second. Yep, okay. that was your first visit. So, and then at the end of, and so I decided to go ahead and move. I knew that, you know, by by this time, that she would be my wife. You tell me you knew like three days later. Three days later from what? The first date. No, what? No, I didn't say the first date. What, what? I'm saying is, Are I knew sure? by September I had already known. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. okay. I'd already known. Mm -hmm. And so the end of October of 2001 is when I decided to get a job, look for a job in Atlanta, in Atlanta look for a job in an apartment in Atlanta and move and get um, to stay there, to move to Atlanta. He was playing no games, none. I had... <laughs> 
So like I said, I was looking forward to moving back to Atlanta. I had already been away from college, from home for three years of college at Oakwood in Huntsville, Alabama. Then a summer, you know, a little summer break at home in Atlanta and an early start in the summer with mom, one of my best friends who was also in PT school. She graduated from Oakwood and went to Howard as well. So we, 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 we went together as a package deal. We were roommates at Oakwood. Dana, I love her. And um, so I was really looking forward to being back home for good, for good, because I did three years at Oakwood and three years at, at Howard. And so, you know, after graduation, it's time to, to get back into life. And life as an adult, you know, different than how it was when I left home for college as, as, a, as a much younger adult, um, more of my mom and dad's little girl than the woman that I was coming back as <laughs> and so I get there and we had a phone conversation when you were telling me about your lease coming up soon mm -hmm. you remember that conversation I remember I said that my you know that I was moving to Atlanta my and lease I was, was like, ending and I'm you moving are? to Atlanta you sure this year in my head I'm like I just got here and I'm gonna be the only one you know and so what is that gonna be like are you going to be clingy? Oh, am I ready for that? That's Appar a little, that's a apparently bit, you a were, too. because here we are 20 years later. Yeah. So you were apparently ready for whatever. Or I got ready. Happened, yeah. You, I mean, you, it was very ready. clear you were serious. You, We never broke up. We never went through rifts or anything. Like, I mean, we, we consistently stayed together from the day that we met. And um, he, like I said, was playing no games. He he knew what he had. <laughs> Come on now, somebody testify. He knew what he saw up here in this woman. And he said, I'm not letting that go. I'm moving to Atlanta. I'm not going to risk anybody else snatching her from under my feet. I think that's what it was. It's the first time in my life I've ever said that. But that's really what it was, wasn't it, honey? You said, I'm not going to be dating you long distance. I need to get down there so I can keep my eyes on the situation. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he said, he told me on the phone, he said, now if I move down there, I'm not moving down there to be your boyfriend. I was like, what? Wait, what you talking about? You, but you're my boyfriend. So what? I'm not, if I move down there, I'm not moving down there to stay a boyfriend. I'm not picking up my whole life and coming to Atlanta just to stay a boyfriend. <laughs> I was so naive. I was like, what does that mean? What is he talking about? What? I mean, is he breaking up with me or is he proposing right now? What is going on? It's just all going a little bit too fast. He's so serious. He was so grown and, and mature and so serious and so ready. I'm like, well, I mean, well, I, most of my girlfriends dated for a year or two or three before these conversations were had. You know what's interesting little, is that that's almost church girls. Which we weren't be used to going that fast. That's almost twenty years ago. Yeah, babe. Almost twenty years ago. That just now so I to was, you. No, I was just thinking. I mean, because you were saying so grown and everything. I was twenty six years old. Mm hmm. And so we were twenty five. No, I was twenty six. We turned twenty six that year. Like the end of August. August, right? Mm -hmm. But by the time that I was moving, yeah, you know that was. Uh, I was 26 mm -hmm. when I moved it in October mm -hmm. and so 26 years old and you know I had uh, lived the life already so what is that a uh, life I know but guys that I mean I'm used to guys at college and in graduate school and they were still trying to you know figure things life. out or they were in graduate school you know still they were in graduate yeah. school you were you were they were working right they were still they still trying to figure it out. nowadays they're still trying to figure it out at 26 yeah and so no you know no no you were no. you were ready ready no. so yeah he was serious so so then you move and so then i move and so what happened after i moved i got an apartment got a job and we got engaged and well, I, you know, proposed. That's a funny oh. story. How many times did you have to talk to my dad about that one? I don't remember. How many times did I talk to your dad? Oh my goodness, I'm glad we're having this conversation. 
so that when you talk to our grandchildren, you can have the deep. You might have to look back over this video. Three, baby, three. Uh, Remember, Daddy said, "Y'all are ready." She's still studying for her board. She hasn't grad. I mean, she she doesn't have a, a her license yet. You all need to make sure that you can be established to provide. You need to be able to provide for her. You're just getting here, and getting settled. You know, you want to make sure you're in your job for a while. <laughs> you remember that? They, they, I mean, vaguely, they, vaguely, they, but I don't remember. You say, you know, how many times? I don't remember how many times. The, I know that. The third you know, time you talked to him and he said, you all are ready. You said, okay, uh, thank you for your advice. <laughs> I'll be moving forward. Uh, yeah. So. So then how did the proposal happen? Do you remember that? At your house? Oh, yes. Lordy, mercy. I thought oh, you were going to tell us how it went. You remember everything. Say that you again. Me, you I remember, remember everything. everything. So don't forget. Right. You remember the, talking about something the, the, in the, house. The, the color shoes I had on at the time. Detail, it's the devil's in the details. It's, you like, know, it's all about the details. Which side of the couch I was sitting I on. I probably remember that. Go ahead. So tell us the story. I know, I was, I know the chair I was sitting in. You gave me a book. Do you remember the book? No. So he had a book of um, poems about love. And uh, you wrote the message in, in the book. Did I? Yes, you did. You were missing. You gave it to me to read. And in the message, you were asking me to marry you. I'm such a romantic guy. You used to be. I'm such a romantic <laughs> guy, man. Three kids ago. I'm such a romantic it, guy. It, it comes up every Man, every now and then. I tell you. But yeah, you were you were you were sugar sappy sweet back then. You, right you, poems. You got a good one. I'm telling you, you got good. you got yourself a good one. Right, it's good all the time. Right poems and stuff. Right stuff in books and stuff. Yeah, you I'm did. You Man, did that. Boo. You. you did that. Yeah. When am I gonna get me another one? It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Oh, I got you. I got your book coming. Oh yeah, you wrote a book so you can write one about us. You can talk about that later. Yeah, we'll since, mention that later. Since you had, you know what? It was laying the groundwork for what was to come and didn't even know it. All that writing you were doing. Hmm. Well, so anyway, we'll talk about the book later. But so then we ended up. Oh, uh, we got engaged. Mm -hmm. And. We ended up getting married in, well, basically two years later. Uh, so we got Was married. Was it all two years after the engagement? No. No, I'm saying after, so we got married oh. in October 2003. Yes. Uh, but what's interesting is that part of that, uh, I guess, you know, during that engagement time, we ended up, do you remember? Of course you remember. Um, so... During the day, I used to listen to this radio station in Atlanta, and they had this this contest called what was it called? What's love got to do with it? No, that wasn't the name of it. Are you sure? No, it was, it was a Valentine a, contest. Yeah, it was some kind of Valentine's contest. V one hundred three. V one hundred three was a Valentine's contest, and if you're from you know, Atlanta, you know V one hundred three. Yes, yes, yes. I miss it. And so every day, like they, music, so they had <laughs> Valentine's Day was on a Friday. And that entire week before Valentine's Day, uh, they were going to be giving out these different gifts to, um, you know, to their winners. To, to celebrate, yeah. Uh, to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And so I was listening to the radio and I heard about what happened about the, about the contest. And so, you know, I... Did I enter or did you enter? <laughs> That's the oh. funny thing. I entered with a letter that you had written me. I submitted a, a letter that you had written me by email. You had to email them. Right. And so it was. So but, we ended but up you getting. Just, you just sent a, a letter. Just it was just a letter that I wrote, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is, they called me, and I thought that she sent, um, this this basically this this. It's kind of like a poem, a little write-up um, that we had, that I had sent to her and I put on our brother-in-law's website. He had a church website. And so when they asked me to, 
As a matter of fact, when they called and they said that you won, and they wanted me to read it. You were one of you were one of the fi- three finalists. One of the finalists, or something like mm-hmm. that, or that. Mm-hmm. And so they wanted me to read it on air. Mm-hmm. And so I read what I thought she sent. Yeah, and I was so surprised because it wasn't what I sent. But yeah. that wasn't what she it sent. So, so I read what I thought that she sent. I cried. And we were, and so we won a couple of prizes. I think we won like dinner to Sambuca and, Jazz and, Cafe. And the first, and the um, the. That thing that you didn't feel comfortable going to because you oh were yeah new, the new national Christian. basketball players association an all star um, event because it was when the all star right when the all star game was in Atlanta and I was a new Christian and so of course I didn't feel you know I didn't feel comfortable going to this 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 it was a gala that's what it was national I basketball players so association bad. gala I had never been to anything like that. And because, you know, I grew up in, in D.C., going to clubs and all the other stuff, whatever. So, you I know, I knew that it was an environment for a Christian. It wasn't Christian for an environment for me. I was so sad. And so. It's like, how you know? We don't have to drink. Let's just go. We get to dress up. And he's like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. That's not a good environment for, for, for us. Right. And also, atmosphere. <laughs> and also because it, it because we were going to be entered. So we won. We won. You could tell how long ago this was because we won blockbuster movies. Yeah, I forgot we about won. That movie did. You're right. Um, we won tickets to uh, Sambuca Jazz Cafe. Yeah, that was nice. You remember when we went? Mm-hmm. That was nice. And it was like one or two, uh, a couple other things we and won. And then an entry and an opportunity entry to win the grand, the grand prize, prize, which would have been a, a gift certificate toward my wedding gown and a diamond wedding ring. And right. and. Uh, trip and to Jamaica some, and the honeymoon the honeymoon to Jamaica and so the next couple of days what I did is to try to enter and you know to to, to boost our, to chances, boost our to chances of winning I sent in some poems that I had written to my wife uh, then girlfriend and that Friday Valentine's Day they called and said that we won and so like you said we won the we won the engagement um, ring engagement ring we won the uh, the engagement party at mm-hmm. Romano's Macaroni, Macaroni Grill. Grill. That's true. We did win that too. See, I remember stuff. Look at you. We won five hundred dollars to towards her wedding gown. Yeah. And then we won the honeymoon trip to Jamaica. Mm-hmm. We won and it. I we won it. believe it. And yes. we needed it too. Two broke folk. Yes. <laughs> that was a yes. blessing. So, so exciting! We got married in two thousand. As a matter of fact, it was fact, like confirmation that we were supposed to, we were meant to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, we ended up. We got married in two thousand three. Uh, re- what we really did was really just exchange our vows. Um, two thousand three at her parents' we home. Got, we got married. Yeah, we got married. <laughs> and then, but, we and then we did our wedding a year later because we wanted to buy a house. We wanted to move into a house after we got married, and we couldn't afford to do both. Uh, and so for our one year anniversary is when we had our actual wedding and invited our friends and family. Didn't make sense to everybody. Got a couple of jokes for it, but you know, whatever. It worked for us. We were it able sure to move did. into our home that we stayed in for three and a half years until mm-hmm. he got called to ministry and went to college. And I would recommend, you know, do what's practical for for you. Do what works for your budget. Don't you don't have to go with the traditional method of doing things. Now, by that, I mean you don't have to have the big, humongous wedding if that's not something that you and your family can afford. We had a really sweet, intimate um, bow exchange ceremony at my parents' home. In fact, the very night of the same day that I took my, my board exams, so I'm sitting there in the board, you know, at the at the testing center with my mind on where the lighting is going to go and where the flowers are going to go and where the tool can be put on you know my sister was going to take care of decoration but i'm kind of semi-focused on that and taking my exams but i passed after i had taken them several times but that's the time that i passed and then we said that we exchanged our vows that night and like you said a year later on our anniversary is when we had our big wedding so i just waited to wear the wedding gown that i had won the money for I saved that for the actual wedding ceremony where we were able to invite guests and friends and family and what have you. And it it turned out all right. 
So that is our story. Uh, that is how we met. Uh, we hope that you were blessed by this story. Uh, <laughs> You're such so, a pastor. Oh. Some way, shape, or You're so cute. You know, <laughs> that you were blessed by this this. Or this and entertain. Entertain, or, encourage. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because actually, somebody put in a comment that they wanted to they wanted to know our story mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to know how we met so we hope that uh, this answers your question if about it did, how we met. if you still have some questions about our background and how we met and who we are who we as a are, couple just and put it in the comments parenting maybe we can do a, another next one can be a parenting video how it is raising our three children and what they think about our plans to move to Africa I keep saying we're gonna do one of those we tried but, but there was no audio we recorded three times. Bless my sweet children's heart. They were enthused. They were eager. They were engaging. They talked. And we would look back over the video and you could just see. You couldn't hear a thing. So I, I tried it one more time. You want to do it again? They're like, no, mommy. No, no. We're, we're done. We'll have to do it another day. And that was about four months ago now. So. Yeah, that's a while ago. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll try another one with them. So. For those who are, if this is your first time viewing, uh, we are documenting our transition, our journey as we prepare to, of course, in the end of this month, in a couple of weeks, we are going to visit Ghana and we are- Anniversary. Anniversary in October. And we also are planning uh, in the future to move to Ghana. And so this is going to be our uh, you know, this is this is our story. This is our story. Uh, so we'll upload videos to to share about our journey, uh, some of our everyday day to day life uh, events, things that go on in the family, um, just to document uh, as we prepare that journey. Uh, but before we close, uh, if you have not picked up uh, this book, uh, this is a book that I wrote last year. It's called Identity Theft: Uncovering the Truth about black history in the Bible. And this book right here, uh, in writing this book, it gave me, uh, this is probably one of the biggest reasons why uh, we are uh, making that transition uh, because of the things that are written in this book, the things that I've learned as I have studied uh, to write this book. So you can find uh, this at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, we'll find, we'll have a link in the description uh, for you to check that out. And mm -hmm. we hope that you'll purchase it, read it, tell us what you think. Learn. Learn something. Yes, yes, yes. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like if you like the content, and share it with your friends. And any other videos you would like for us to, to put out, anything else you want us to talk about, put it in the comments. Take care and we'll see you next time.